Semis under pressure today. The SMH ETF is down more than 3%, led lower by NVIDIA. AMD is also in the red, and that name is reporting earnings tonight in overtime. Joining me now, Stacey Raskin, Bernstein Research Senior Analyst. Welcome back. It's nice to see you. Good to be here. It's funny. There's a lot that matters in this report, but even you suggest that all that probably will matter to investors is the AI story. What's hotter than NVIDIA stock this year? It's something that would be worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the near future. The rare limited edition NVIDIA keychain collectible. Our initial stock vanished in seconds. Get yours now from the link below. Yeah, that's probably going to be top of mind for, for most investors. That seems to be for AMD what they've cared about. Frankly, it's, it's what's really, I know the stock is down off the peak, but if you look over the last year or two, it's still up quite a bit. Numbers have actually mostly come down for them over that period. The whole thing that's been supporting the stock has been increasing expectations for that AI store. And I do think that's where investors are going to be focusing their attention tonight. Okay, well, what's most important to watch as it relates to that? I mean, it's the guide for their MI300 business, and they've been sort of ticking it up through the year. They went from, I can't remember, $2 billion to $3.5 billion. Now the guide is $4 billion. Um, I'd say expectations have gotten even higher than that. I think uh, expectations for most of my clients have been in the 5 to $6 billion range. Maybe given the drawdown in the stock, maybe they're a little lower now, 4 .5 to 5 but they clearly need to take that guidance for the year up. I think if they don't take it up, like nothing else is going to matter uh, regardless of what happens in the rest of the business. How much of, of AMD's issue, issues, I mean, if you even want to use that word, and maybe I'm wrong to use it, is simply the fact that it's not NVIDIA. NVIDIA's recent stock decline has raised concerns about the broader impact on AI development. The company has been a key player in providing the computational horsepower necessary for training and running complex AI models. However, it's crucial to differentiate between stock performance and the underlying technology. While NVIDIA's stock price may fluctuate, the demand for advanced computing solutions for AI remains robust. The field is progressing rapidly, with new breakthroughs emerging regularly. NVIDIA's GPUs are at the heart of many AI applications, from natural language processing to autonomous vehicles, driving significant advancements in the industry. Despite NVIDIA's strong position in the market, it is not the sole provider of AI hardware. Competitors are investing heavily in developing their own AI chips, creating a more competitive landscape. Companies like AMD, Intel, and specialized startups are all pushing the envelope, which could drive innovation and potentially accelerate AI development as a whole. This increased competition is healthy for the industry as it fosters innovation and ensures that no single company can monopolize the market. People have been looking at AMD as a second source. There's, there's a view that, you know, NVIDIA is, is clearly fairly dominant in what they do and, and the market needs a second source. And it's a big market in theory. People have been throwing out numbers, you know, that it's hundreds of billions of dollars, which actually is not implausible. but. The idea that they can get a relatively small piece of a very big market that could drive a lot of upside. And I think that's that thesis on its surface makes sense. I think the issue such it is, and, and again, I always say this, I don't want to knock AMD for what they are. I mean, they're doing, like, even if they do $4 billion this year, it was zero a year ago, okay? So that's uh, objectively by itself, that's, a, that's quite the accomplishment. But in the grand scheme of things, frankly, it's kind of a rounding error given the magnitude of what we're seeing from their competitors. Um, and if you're looking at sort of, especially as you're going forward, you're looking at the competitive roadmaps between the two, it's getting tougher, not, not easier. I mean, right now is probably the best position competitively that AMD is going to be in if we're looking at, at, at what their competitors have next year. And again, if they can't significantly upside in, in that environment, like how do you do it as, as the competitive environment gets tougher as the roadmaps continue to evolve? So I think that's, that's the issue. It's not that they're doing anything wrong. I'm actually kind of impressed with what they've been able to do with what they have over the last year or two. But, you know, given what they're up against, it's, it's just a tough fight. That's all. It, al it almost, you, you sort of make, make my point of the question that I asked you, right? They're doing all these things, and yet the stock's down 7% yeah. year to date. It's down 15% over a month. They theoretically have a good story to tell with a good storyteller at the top. And yet, it's not NVIDIA. It, it's a look, even even NVIDIA and, and, and lots of the other AI names are, are down recently. So like the whole, I don't want to say the shine is coming off the AI story. I'm still very bullish like on, on, on AI stories in general, but certainly, you know, they, the, that whole narrative has come under some pressure. 
AMD's also been hit by some more company specific stuff. There has been some speculation of some of the issues, some some potential tech technology issues with like the high bandwidth memory on their parts and maybe some order pushouts or order cuts, which which have impacted the stock, I think, uh, more, more recently. Um, and again, I think as people are doing the comparison on the roadmaps, again, people are starting to realize it, it's, it's just tough. And then you look at where the expectations are. Like, again, you gotta remember, this is a company where numbers overall for them have come down every single quarter for the last like two years, right? So it's not even like you've got a fundamental you know, backstop to help things. Like all of the stock performance has been multiple expansion as numbers have come down. We're now at the point where AI actually now starts to, to need to drive upside to numbers and expectations are already high. And if you can't drive upside to those expectations, like you may have an issue. Moreover, the AI ecosystem is supported by a diverse array of technological advancements beyond just hardware. Software frameworks, algorithms, and interdisciplinary research are all propelling the field forward. Collaborations between tech giants, academic institutions, and research organizations are contributing to an environment rich with innovation and progress. NVIDIA's role, while significant, is part of a larger, dynamic ecosystem that thrives on collective advancements. Ultimately, the recent setback for NVIDIA is likely a temporary blip. The long-term trajectory of AI is driven by fundamental technological advancements, not the stock price of a single company. As long as the demand for AI and advanced computing continues to grow, companies like NVIDIA will remain essential players in the tech landscape. Investors and industry observers should focus on the underlying technological progress and the broader trends in AI development, rather than short-term market fluctuations. The future of AI looks promising, and NVIDIA's contributions will continue to be a vital part of this exciting field. In the grand scheme, the evolution of AI technology is a testament to the collaborative and competitive spirit that defines the tech industry, ensuring continuous growth and innovation. I got to, to interrupt with a really funny story that happened recently. McDonald's in China. If you order a McFlurry, they ask you if you want a NVIDIA keychain with it, and it only sells for $20. But the problem is, they only made that available to less than 10,000 customers. So their NVIDIA keychain is already sold out, and it's right now in the retail market and sells for hundreds of dollars. And Elon commented on this, and he said that he had no idea that this was happening, and added, in that case, I will definitely have some just for you to know. The first link in description. Click on it if you want to buy this NVIDIA keychain. I don't know if this is a collaboration, but NVIDIA in China has posted about this, and also McDonald's in China posted about it. But anyways, in the next couple of years, this product might even sell for thousands of dollars. We don't get that many chances to buy rare collectibles like this. Anyways, find the link at the description and hurry, because we have just 100 pieces left. Think about the history of NVIDIA from the 1990s onward, where your DNA was really in you know, computer graphics, uh, helping to make beautiful graphics. What is the significance of NVIDIA being here today, right now, at a conference like SIGGRAPH? Well, you know, uh, SIGGRAPH used to be about computer graphics. Now it's about computer graphics and generative AI. It's about simulation, it's about generative AI. And, and we all know that the journey of NVIDIA, which started out in computer graphics, as you said, um, uh, really brought us here. And so I made a cartoon for you. I made a cartoon for you of our journey. Did you make and it or did generative AI I, make I, it? I had it, oh, hang on a second. I had it made, <laughs> I had it made. Um, <clears throat> that's what CEOs do. We don't do anything, we just have it be done. kind of starts something like this. Hey guys, wouldn't it be great if we had a cartoon and it illustrated some of the most important milestones in the computer industry and how it led to NVIDIA and where we are today. And, and so we illustrate- And also do it in three hours. And, and do it in three much. hours, right. Yeah. And, and so this, is, this cartoon here is really terrific. So these are some of the, some of the most important moments in the computer industry. Uh, the IBM System 360, of course, the invention of modern computing, uh, the teapot, 1975, the Utah teapot, 1979, ray tracing, um, 
uh, Turner Witted, uh, uh, one of the great researchers, uh, NVIDIA researcher for a long time. Uh, 1986, programmable shading. Uh, of course, uh, most of the animated movies that we see today wouldn't be possible if not for programmable shading. Originally done on the Cray supercomputer, uh, led to uh, what, and then in 1993, NVIDIA was founded. Chris Curtis and I founded the company. Uh, 1995, Windows PC revolutionized uh, the personal computer industry, uh, put a personal computer in every home and every desk. Uh, multimedia PC was uh, was invented. 2001, we invented uh, the first programmable shading GPU, and and that that really uh, drove uh, a vast majority of Nvidia's journey up to that point. But at the background of everything we were doing was accelerated computing, and accelerated and and we believed that you could create a type of computing model that could augment the general purpose computing so that you can solve problems that normal computers can't. And the application we chose first was computer graphics and it was probably one of the best decisions we ever made because computer graphics was insanely computationally in intensive and remains so uh, for the entire 31 years that, that uh, NVIDIA has been here and since the beginning of computer graphics in fact. It uh, required a Cray supercomputer to render some of the original scenes, so it kind of tells you how computationally intensive it was. And it was also incredibly high volume because we applied computer graphics to an application at the time that uh, wasn't mainstream, 3D graphics video games. The combination of very large volume, very complicated computing problem led to a very large R&D budget for us, which drove the flywheel of our company. That observation we made in 1993 was spot on. And it led us to be able to pioneer the work that we're doing in accelerated computing. We tried it many times. CUDA was, of course, the revolutionary version. But prior to that, we had a computing model we call CG, C for graphics, C on top of GPUs. And so we've been working on accelerated computing for a long time. Uh, promoting and evangelizing CUDA, getting CUDA everywhere, and putting on every single one of our GPUs so that this computing model was compatible with, the, with any application that was written for it, irrespective of which generation of our processors, that was a great decision. And one, one day in 2012, we made our first contact, you know, Star Trek first contact with artificial intelligence. That first contact was AlexNet, and it was in 2012, very big moment. Uh, we made the observation that AlexNet was an incredible breakthrough in computer vision, but at the core of it, deep learning was deeply profound. That it was a new way of writing software. Instead of engineers given input, imagining what the output was going to be, write algorithms, we now have a computer that given input and example outputs would figure out what the program is in the middle. That observation and that we can use this technique to solve a whole bunch of problems that previously wasn't solvable was a great observation. And we changed everything in our company to pursue it, from the processor to the systems to the software stack, all the algorithms, NVIDIA basic research pivoted towards working on deep learning. Uh, by the way, this is a great place for research. As you know, NVIDIA is uh, passionate about, about uh, uh, SIGGRAPH, and this year we have 20 papers that are at the intersection of generative AI and simulation. And so in 20, 2016, uh, we introduced the first computer we built for deep learning, and we called it DGX1. And I delivered the first DGX1 outside of our company. I built it for NVIDIA to build models for self-driving cars and robotics and such, and, and generative AI for graphics. Uh, but we, uh, somebody saw uh, an example of DGX1 Elon reached out to me and said, hey, I would love to have one of those for a startup company we're starting. And so I delivered the first one to a company at the time uh, that knew, nobody knew about called OpenAI. And so that was 2016. Uh, 2017 was the transformer uh, that revolutionized modern uh, machine learning, mo modern deep learning. In 2018, right here at SIGGRAPH, we announced RTX, the world's first real-time interactive ray tracer, ray tracing platform, we call it RTX. It was such a big deal that we changed the name of GTX, which everybody referred to our graphics cards as, to RTX. Uh, another shout out for, for uh, uh, a great researcher, his name is Stephen Parker, 
Uh, many of you know he's been coming to Cigar for a long time. Uh, he passed this year, and uh, he was a, a, a he was one of the one of the core uh, pioneer researchers behind real time ray tracing, mm -hmm. and we miss him dearly. And so, anyways. Uh, and you mentioned last year yeah. during your SIGGRAPH keynote yeah. that RTX Ray Tracing Extreme yeah. was one of the big important moments when computer graphics met AI. That's right. But that had yeah. been happening for a while, actually. So what was so what was so important about RTX in 2018? Well, RTX in 2018, so you know, we, uh, we accelerated uh, ray traversal and bounding box uh, detection, and, and, um, uh, and we made it possible to uh, use a parallel processor to accelerate ray tracing. Um, but even then, we were ray tracing at about, you know, one frame every, call it, you know, 10 frames maybe every second, let's say, maybe five frames every second, depending on, on how, how, many, how many rays we're talking about tracing. And we were doing it at 1080 resolution. Uh, obviously, video games... Uh, need a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, real-time graphics mm -hmm. need more than that. And, and, and so and we this needed, crowd definitely knows what that means, but for the folks who are yeah. watching online yeah. who don't work in this field, I mean, this is basically a way of really manipulating light that's in right. com computer graphics. Simulating how a light interacts with, you true know, to life versus through, right. Happening in real time. That's right. The rendering processes used to take a really long time when you were making something It animated. used to take a Cray supercomputer to render right. just a few pixels. Right. And now we have our RTX to accelerate that tr ray tracing, but it was interactive, it was real time, but it wasn't fast enough to be uh, a video game. And so uh, we realized that, that we needed a big boost, probably something along the lines of 20X or so, maybe 50X or so boost. And so uh, uh, the team uh, invented DLSS, which basically, renders one pixel while it uses AI to infer a whole bunch of other pixels. But anyways, in the next couple of years, this product might even sell for thousands of dollars. We don't get that many chances to buy rare collectibles like this. Anyways, find the link at the description and hurry because we have just 100 pieces left.